Okay, uh, so for today, we are going to go over reading comprehension and we are going to uh, be using the new textbook, right, that we have been given. And uh, so starting with the first uh, passage, we'll read through the passage together and then be answering the questions, right? Like, uh, and it will be a recording that you could refer to on your own so that you could review uh, what we have already covered in class, right? Uh, reading the passage and then uh, having answered the questions, right? It would be an enter key uh, that you could refer to be and uh, to be studying for the reading comprehension uh, part of our uh, unit, right? Uh, so the first uh, passage would go, uh, the title of the passage would be the pyramids, right? That uh, we'll be able to find in the country of Egypt. Passage would read, my mom has always been captivated with the pyramids of Egypt. Whenever anything aired on TV about Egypt, she would look at that and sigh, I'm going there one day. Dad would always smile and say, sure, honey, when we win the jackpot in the, lo in the lo lotto. Well, that Saturday night finally arrived. Mom always picked the same numbers for the lotto every time. And sure enough, she had five out of six winning numbers. She should have seen her carry on. Anyone would have thought she had just won the jackpot. She smiled and turned to dad and said, Guess where we're going, honey? Egypt. Finally, my dream have, can come true. Dad was so happy for her that he gave her a huge hug and kiss and cheered at the top of his voice. They danced around the room for ages. It was really quite infectious. I ended up joining and jumping around like a total goof. Thankfully, my parents, uh, my friends were weren't around there, weren't around to see me. Over the next few weeks, mom and dad madly organized our trip to Egypt. Yeah, that's right. I said our trip. I had to go with them. I can't believe my bad luck. Really, who'd want to see a bunch of stinky old mummies in broken down old pyramids? Not me. I'd rather go scuba diving in the Great Barrier Reef. The day finally arrived when we boarded our flight to Egypt. How horrid having to spend the night on a plane deprived of sleep. Mom knows how much I like my sleep, but she didn't seem to be vexed that I would be missing out. We touched down in Cairo and it was blazing hot. The heat shimmered across the tarmac. I surpri I'm surprised the soles of my shoes didn't melt. Our personal tour guide, Guruti, greeted us in the terminal. We would be spending the next two weeks with him as he showed us the sights of Egypt. Mom was so excited. I'm surprised she could stand up. After recovering briefly from our flight, we had something to eat and then set, and then set out our first excursion. Mom and dad had so much that they wanted to see. It was going to be totally exhausting and boring. Because it was still early in the day and not too hot, the Giza pyramids were our first stop. Awestruck is the only word to describe how I felt. They are absolutely huge. I can't believe the ancient Egyptians managed to build, build them. The Sphinx of Giza and the Great Pyramid would have to be most amazing structures I've ever seen. The Sphinx has the body of a lion and the head of a king. Burudi said these symbolize strength and wisdom. Later in the day, we went to the Khan, a local bazaar. I found it. <clears throat> all a bit stifling with the heat, cooking smells, and noise of the merchants. We set out early the next day <clears throat> to stay at a place called Hurghada. Mom and dad <clears throat> were really excited and just kept saying, you are going to absolutely love this place. The following morning, we woke early to begin an adventure I will never forget. Mom and dad took me down to the marina and we got on board a dive boat. Yeah, something I wanted to do, we were going snorkeling. This area of the Red Sea is renowned for its warm waters, rare fish life, and amazing sea gardens, a subquatic paradise. I had read about this area in books and seen pictures on the internet, but it was so different to actually see it with my own eyes. We snorkeled for hours. It was pictures, it was truly amazing, and I didn't want the day to end. We had lunch on the boat, and then after a short rest, we returned to the water. This day would stay with me forever. Totally awesome. Apparently, mom and dad organized the day, especially for me, because they knew how much I wanted to go to the Great Barrier Reef. That was pretty cool. At least we didn't spend an entire vacation looking at odorous old mummies in broken down old pyramids.
So we would have read through the first passage uh, together, right, as a whole. And so we'll read through the questions and we'll be answering these questions so that we can go over the answer key for these questions, right? So the first question would read, find and underline the word structure in paragraph 10. What is the best uh, meaning that we'll be able to find, right? The structures as we are able to find in paragraph 10, right, that we are able to find would read, uh, read in paragraph 10 that there, there are, right, the Sphinx of Giza and the Great Pyramid would have to be the most amazing structures I've ever seen, right? So we're able to see that these structures are referring to, right, uh, the, the, uh, the Giza Pyramid and uh, the Sphinx of Giza and the Great Pyramid that we're able to see, right, in this passage, right? And therefore, uh, the correct answer here would be D, right? Something built or constructed like the buildings that have been mentioned in the paragraph, right? And uh, for number two, the next uh, question would be a follow-up question where choose the best answer and think about each choice carefully, right? So give me a heads up or a hint about what this, uh, what the next question and what these types of questions were referred to would be, it would actually be a follow-up of question one. So A would be, uh, a of two would be explaining something about A of one, right? B corresponding to B, C to C, D to D that we'll be able to find. Uh, here, therefore, the, the answer would be D. The pyramid and sphinx were actually built by ancient Egyptians. This would be the best answer since D was the answer for number one. But even if we were to look at the line reference in the paragraph, right? The pyramid and the sphinx were mentioned, right? As to being the structures, uh, as they were being uh, mentioned, right? In the paragraph that we have read. And so D would be the answer here as well, right? But it would be a uh, sort of a, a pair that the, that the uh, the book would be providing for us to look at, right? And then uh, number one, right? Find and underline the words deprived of in paragraph seven, right? What is the best meaning? And uh, we'll be able to find that the word deprived of, right? Deprived of sleep, right? As we find in paragraph seven that we're able to find, right? If we take a look at that, uh, if we take a look at paragraph seven, deprived of sleep, right? This would mean in uh, paragraph uh, seven in number two would be enjoying lots of, having no need for, experiencing a lack of, experiencing an increase of. Here it would be experiencing a lack of, right? That we're able to find here, right? Lack of sleep that, they, that the uh, narrator, the person would have found, right? In the, uh, in the passage as we have read through. And again, choose the best answer. Think about each choice carefully. Right. Uh, the next sentence uh, mentions that the writer likes his or her sleep and would be missing out on the, during the flight. This is not the best answer. Uh, again, each uh, each uh, choice would be referring to right each of the choices that would be in the previous sentence. And again, the answer best answer here would be that this could be the best answer, right? Uh, or C corresponding answer as the writer would think it was terrible to experience a lack of sleep. Uh, you, uh, you must, but you must always check all answers, right? And so the notion that uh, the mother will not uh, would will have wanted the uh, the boy to sleep right on the uh, on the plane, and therefore would not have woken him up, right? And, but then uh, he would have uh, been uh, wanting to right. Uh, uh, to stay up in order to experience the uh, the entire experience as a whole, so it was uh, right. It would have been terrible to experience the lack of sleep, right? Deprived of sleep, lack uh, deprived of sleep, right? Experience the lack of sleep as we are able to see, right, in this passage, right. And then uh, the next question, as we go through, right, the next uh, pa uh, passage would the next. Uh, uh, Page would read, right? Find the word vex, right? In paragraph seven that we're able to find the word vex, what is the best meaning? Uh, as we have briefly talked about, right? Uh, paragraph seven as we go, uh, as we go along. Uh, as we have briefly talked about, mom knows how much I like my sleep, but she didn't seem to be vexed, right? That I would be missing out, right? So mom wasn't worried about, right? The boy uh, missing out in the, uh, in uh, the tour or the sightseeing, but was actually uh, more worried about him getting enough sleep at the, on the plane, right? And therefore, 
right? The presenter here would have been worried, right? That uh, she would not have been worried about him missing out, but would have wanted him to uh, get enough sleep and enough rest, right? And uh, the word stifling in paragraph 10, again, another uh, vocabulary question that we're able to find. So we'll be able to go through paragraph 10 and uh, read, uh, find the answer for that, right? And read the remainder of the sentence to give you an idea, right? The, the boxes on the left, right, right? The think boxes would be providing you the hints and clues to be able to find the answer for the question that we are given, right? So let's uh, go back to paragraph 10 and let's try to find what the word, right? What the word would mean for us, right? So what would the word stifling mean? Stifling with heat, cooking smells, and noises emerges, right? Stifling here would be, right, uh, overwhelming, right? Uh, being full of, right, that we're able to find, right? Stifling with heat, right? Cooking smell, right? All of that, right? As we are able to find overflowing with, overwhelming with, right? That we're able to find. And so the answer here would be B as we find it, right? And then number three, what is meant by the words carry on in paragraph three? And then uh, the paragraphs four and five would help as well, right, as we look through. But paragraph three, let's take a look at paragraph three. So what would the word carry on mean, right? And they have provided that paragraph four and paragraph five would help us find the answer for that. You should have seen her carry on, right? Carry on with what, right? They would be uh, jumping up and down, right, as if they won the jackpot, right, the lottery. And uh, she would, uh, the dad would be so happy for her that she, he would give a huge hug and a kiss, right? And also they would be dancing around the room for ages. And then it would have been infectious and he would have joined and jumped around like a total goof, right? And so a lot of hyperbole sort of being mentioned, right? A lot of uh, sort of uh, overreaction, as you call it, right? And so the best answer here would be carry on. Uh, the bet would be uh, best referred to or best uh, uh, portrayed by the idea that to add or uh, to to be able to uh, uh, to be able to um, refer to or to act in an excited or foolish manner, right? So a little bit of hyperbole, a little bit of overreacting that we're able to see, right? As we see in paragraph three, right? That we're able to find. And the next question would be, uh, what does the word renowned mean in par paragraph uh, 11 as we uh, as we say right the rest of the sentence that one following it will will give you a clue right so again a lot of context that we're able to find in uh in referencing uh these questions right um so we would be able to find that what does the word renowned in paragraph 11 mean so let's go back to paragraph 11 and see what that word would mean Okay, paragraph 11, the word renowned would mean Here, the Red Sea is renowned for its warm waters, rare fish life, and amazing sea gardens, a aquatic paradise, as we call it, right? And so renowned for would mean, right, uh, known for, famous for, as we call it, right? And so therefore, the answer would have been A, right, famous for uh, number four, right, as we find. And for number five, right, find the word or, or odorous in paragraph 12, right, another word that could be best used in its place, right? And so we'd be able to find the word or, odorous here. And so let's take a look, right, at the passage in order to find the, uh, find the word, right, in the, uh, the last paragraph of the passage as we find it. Uh, the entire vacation looking at odorous, right, that we're able to find old mummies and broken down old pyramids, right? Uh, odor, odor would be smell, right? And so odorous would be uh, smelly or stinky as we find it. And, and therefore, uh, the answer, right, uh, here would be uh, smelly or stinky as we find for number five, right? And then uh, the next page that we are able to find would be, what does the word captivated mean, right? Captivated in paragraph one, let's take a look at the word and let's see what that would mean. And so the word captivated in paragraph one, right? Mom has always been captivated with the pyramids of Egypt, right? So what would that mean, right? And, uh, and so I'm going there one day, right? So what would the word captivated mean here? So we'd be able to find that the word captivated mean uh, 
uh, been captured, been intensely interested, had admired him for, so uh, would be sort of similar or synonymous to each other. But the best answer would be being intensely interested, right? Been captivated, so uh, enamored or drawn into, right? Having a, 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 a vivid fascination for, right? Capture, uh, definitely, if it's metaphorically, then maybe. But here we're talking about not necessarily the physical capturing, but more like mentally, right? As we as we uh, see, or emotionally, right? As we can see, right? In terms of interest, right? So the best answer here would be been interest, intensely interested, as we find here, right? And then the word bizarre, as we find it in paragraph 10, right, would mean, let's take a look at uh, paragraph 10 and see what the word would mean in the context, right? Paragraph 10, as we find it, right, would be, uh, the bizarre would be mentioned, right? As we find here, a local bazaar, and the bazaar would have, uh, and there would be the merchant, right? As we find, and therefore here, uh, the best answer would be uh, a market, right? As we find, right? A market for a bazaar, right? Uh, where there are merchants would be the best answer would be a local market, right? For the definition of bazaar, right? And uh, so the next question, right, would be explain what is meant by the phrase heat shimmered across the tarmac from paragraph eight, right? So what does heat shimmered across the tarmac? What would that mean in paragraph eight, right? So as we're able to find it in paragraph eight, right, that would be the question or the sentence where it says the heat shimmered across the tarmac. So what would that mean? The tarmac is actually the material used to pave the road, right? And so uh, heat shimmering means like water vapor or uh, the heat being reflected reflected of that material, right? Uh, called tarmac, so it'll be reflected, right? Uh, the late, the rays, right, would be reflected, the heat of rays, right, would be reflected, and therefore that would be called, right, uh, the heat uh, shimmering, right? And so uh, we'd be able to portray or uh, describe that, right, the water vapor is being uh, reflected or light is being refracted, right, and that the road, the uh, tarmac uh, on the road, right, would be shining, glistening, right, shimmering, right radiating right in a lot of ways right uh, uh being portrayed right as we are able to find it right with the imagery that we'll be able to find and uh be able to imagine as well right portray as well right and uh the next question would be uh what does the phrase <coughs> a subquatic paradise mean right what does the word uh, subquatic par sub aquatic paradise mean so let's again return to paragraph 11 and let's try to find uh, what that answer would be, right? And so uh, in paragraph 11, we're able to find that a subquatic, a subquatic paradise, right? A subquatic paradise would be uh, where they are, uh, the Red Sea is renowned for warm waters, rare fish life and amazing sea gardens, right? Paradise would mean heaven, right? Heaven uh, or a perfect place, right? And subaquatic would be sub under a Aqua would be water, so underwater, paradise, underwater, uh, heaven like state, right? Heaven or a uh, perfect world, right? So underwater, paradise, as we call it. And so here, uh, the best answer would be uh, uh, underwater, uh, heaven, underwater, uh, uh, heavenly place, as we call it, right? So that would be what uh, the, the phrase, right? So aquatic paradise would mean. And for number five, what word could best replace apparently in paragraph 11? And so these words are adverbs that we are able to find, right? In paragraph 11, as we find this, right, uh, would be the uh, the uh, joining words as we uh, as we call. And so the word, uh, the adverb, ad, uh, the adverb, right? Uh, apparently, we would be able to find, right? Apparently, mom and dad had rec uh, organized the day especially for me, right? Uh, because they know they knew how much I wanted to go to the Great Barrier Reef. So apparently, evidently, obviously, clearly, right, all would be synonyms of one another that we'd be able to find. And so here the answer for uh, number five would have been, right, apparently in paragraph 11 would be evidently, right, evidently, obviously, clearly, uh, simply put, straightforwardly, all these would be synonyms of one another that we'd be able to find, right? And then uh, the next question would be, find the word merchants in paragraph 10, right? Another word that could be used in its place. And so merchants, as we find in paragraph 10, right, would mean, right, uh, sellers, 
or vendors, right? Uh, not uh, not the buyers, but actually the vendor sellers, right? People who are uh, who are uh, uh, providing the goods right in the market, right? And therefore, the word merchant, right, in paragraph, right, ten as we find, would be best uh, best uh, translated or uh, provide a synonym such as vendors or sellers, right, as we can call it, right. And then uh, the next question, right? Uh, the, the next question would be, the last question would be, explain what is meant by the phrase really quite infectious used in paragraph five, right? What would the word infectious mean? And so people were coming into the room and they were joining the dance, right? And so the idea that it was quite infectious, right? Would mean that it's actually, right? Uh, drawing a lot of people, right? Into the room, right? Or uh, spreading really quickly, right? Infectious would mean, and therefore here, uh, the word infection would be uh, spreading, right? Drawing people as we are able to find, right? Uh, here in uh, for the uh, the final uh, answer for this uh, for this question, right? That we were able to find spreading, uh, drawing people, right? And uh, so for uh, the next. Uh, passage, we'll be looking, uh, take a look at the poem called The Beach, right? There would be, uh, uh, there would be 10 different stanzas, right? That would be, uh, that would, cons that would be consisting of this poem. And there would be the repeating line. The first line would be repeating, right? Four lines, uh, and uh, how many stanzas are there? So for every poem, we look at how many stanzas there are and how many lines there are, right? So 10 stanzas, four lines each, and each stanza, right, would begin with the repeating line, ooh, I love the beat, right? So uh, that would be the structure of the poem that we will be able to analyze. So let's take a look at the poem, let's read through the poem, and let us uh, enter the questions like we did for the previous uh, passage as well, right? So for uh, the poem, right, uh, the beach would read, ooh, I love the beach, the soft white sand beneath the bare feet, shifting with my movement, oozing between my hot smelly toes, ooh, I love the beach. The freedom of floor looking in the ocean, the cool water washing over me, cleansing my body, mind, and soul. Ooh, I love the beach, the warm sun glistening on the water, the gentle breeze blowing over me, calming me, cooling me, relaxing me. Ooh, I love the beach, breathing the clean air into my lungs, walking, splashing along the water's edge, every part of my body feeling alive and glowing. Ooh, I love the beach, seeing the dolphins playing in the sea, breaching, jumping, chasing, and rolling, my heart pounding with delight and exhilaration. Ooh, I love the beach, and the summer surfing and swimming, snorkeling through the exquisite reef, the awesome might of nature there for all to see. Ooh, I love the beach, the waves crashing incessantly, always moving, always living, never stopping, demonstrating the power they have over me. Ooh, I love the beach, I see ice pops dripping down my arm, hot dogs sizzling on the barbecue, eating al fresco under the bright twinkling stars. Ooh, I love the beach, the bright colors of the umbrellas, towels and swimsuits, red, yellow, orange and blue, like a dazzling rainbow filling up my senses. Ooh, I love the beach, right? And so there would be this repeating sounds, right? Of blowing, calming, cooling, relaxing, right? There was the sea, right? Flashing, glowing, reaching, jumping, chasing, rolling, right? All these ING sounds, right? Building that rhythm or pattern to it, right? As if it's the undulating motion of the wave that we're able to find. But a lot of calming sense of rhythm that we're able to see, right? Being built in this poem as a whole that we're able to see, right? And that would be providing the uh, therapeutic or sort of like the uh, calming effect of the environment or the uh, the uh, environment that we're able to see, right? Of nature that we're able to see in this uh, in this paragraph and this poem as well, right? Uh, so for number one, what is the meaning of the word exquisite? So exquisite would be Right, in stanza six, always look at the think box, right? What would be the clue that would be being provided? Read the last stanza in, uh, in light, uh, line in stanza six, right? That we're able to take a look at. So let's go back to uh, stanza six and we'll be able to take a look at exquisite reef, right? Snorkeling to the exquisite reef would be beautiful, magnificent, right? Uh, 
amazing, right? All would be synonyms of one another. And so the word exquisite here would be best mean beautiful, right? For number one that we'll be able to find, right? And the author right, uses the words, right, cleansing my body, mind, and soul, and therefore would be providing a, lo a lot of energy, right, to the soul or energy to the people who are visiting to the, uh, to the audience or to the author, to, uh, the narrator himself, right, uh, the, the, the notion or uh, the power or the effect of the nature would be cleansing or uh, ridding of all the pain and sorrow, right, of the body, mind, and soul, and would have that sort of therapeutic effect as a whole, right, that we'll be able to find uh, for number two being portrayed in the passage as a whole, right? And then the words crashing incessantly, right, uh, being referred to in the passage would mean, the word incessantly would mean uh, not stopping. So unstoppingly or continuously as we're able to find, right? And so crashing incessantly would mean water breaking on the shore continuously, right? And so the best answer would have been D, right? And choose the best meaning for this phrase, right? The warm sun glistening on the water. So again, right, water is reflecting the rays or uh, the, the light, right? The sun, sunlight being refracted, the sun ray being refracted or reflected, right? Uh, from the surface of the water as we find it, right? And so the best answer here would be, right? The sun shining and being reflected of the water. Does this paramac or the road was reflecting, uh, reflecting the light, right? Uh, that it was uh, 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 capturing on the surface, right? It's likewise, the water would be refracting reflecting the light that is being shown on the surface of the water as well, right? And so the answer for number four, right, would have been A. And then uh, for number five, uh, <clears throat> the next question would read, explain the meaning of the phrase, my heart pounding with delight and exhilaration, right? So pounding would be beating, right? And so uh, with delight, with the joy, right? Exhilaration would be happiness, right? Joy and happiness. The heart would be pounding so fast, right? Uh, with so much excitement and joy and uh, happiness, right? That we're able to find for number five, right? And then uh, for number six, we're trying to find synonyms for number six, right? And so the word endless would be continuous, right? Uh, unending, right? Um, uh, <clears throat> not stopping, right? All these words would be synonyms of the word endless, right? And then uh, el fresco would be outdoors, right? Outside, outdoors, as we are able to find. And sizzling would be burning, cooking, right? Uh, they were able to find the sizzling uh, <clears throat> on the uh, tarmac or in the water, right? So uh, sizzling would be cooking, burning, uh, shining, radiating, shimmering, glistening, right? All these would be synonyms of one another. And then dazzling would be something that would be attractive, right? The dazzling sort of uh, diamond or uh, the gem so it would be a really attractive sort of uh outshining as we are able to call it so the end uh the answer for d would have been uh attractive right uh shining right as we call it and uh so the next passage uh the final passage that we'll take a look at for uh uh, today would be crocodiles, right, uh, that we'll be taking a look at. So uh, a lot of crocodiles that we're able to find in uh, the park, right, if you have visited right here uh, in uh, in uh, uh, the uh, park uh, here in Myanmar, right, we'll be able to find the crocodiles here, right? Uh, and in fact, they talk about the sea uh, water, crocodiles being uh, uh, a lot of them being found in uh, the rivers, lagoons, swamps, the beaches in Southeast Asia. So they'll be talking about those uh, references as well. So we'll read through uh, the passage, right? There'll be two types of crocodiles that they will be talking about, giving a lot of numbers and data about the crocodiles and the nature of crocodiles, also their diet and also uh, what they eat and uh, uh, and we'll be able to learn about two types of crocodiles, so seawater crocodiles and then freshwater crocodiles. So there'll be two branches that we'll be able to find, and there'll be uh, Latin words to uh, describe the, uh, the the names that they have. Uh, but we'll we'll take a look at them and we'll uh, read through them, like uh, learn about the nature of crocodiles together, and then be answering the questions that we have for the given passage as well, right? A, uh, like uh, like all the other passages, right? So uh, we'll take a look at the passage together. So 
So crocodile, like reptiles, existed before dinosaurs about 230 million years ago, MIA. These remarkably, the acronym, right? Remarkably adaptable creatures outlasted the mass extinction of the dinosaurs to evolve into the 23 species of crocodilians around today. Right, so a lot of numbers being provided here to provide accuracy of the, the data and the information that we're able to find. Crocodilian is the name given to the group of reptiles that includes crocodiles, alligators, and caimans, right? So the brand word or the umbrella word to describe or to include all these different species, right? The crocodiles, alligators, and caimans, right? crocodilian would encompass or include all of them, right? They have changed very little over the last 65 million years, right? Have been around uh, in uh, history for a very long time, right? In the history of uh, animal, uh, animal species, right? One prehistoric species was their <clears throat> Kosukas imperator or flesh crocodile emperor, also known as super croc, right? So there would be a special species that they're referring to that have been around for a very long time, the king species. It was discovered in Niger in Africa and lived about 110 uh, MYA, right? Uh, billion years in time, right? It grew to a length of around 35 feet, dwarfing the crocodilians of today, and weighed in at a hefty 17,500 pounds. The skull alone measured 6.5 feet in length and held 132 feet, right? So a lot of details being provided here with the numbers being provided in order to show the physical appearance or attributes of the crocodile that we were able to find, right? This carnivore had a voracious appetite and probably died out, died out as a result of this, right? So carnivore or meat-eating animals, right? They're able to find voracious, eating, eating all that it can find and probably, right, died out of this because of the very fact that uh, it would have, right, uh, ran out of food to eat because of the voracious appetite and therefore would have become extinct, right? And uh, so it is. Uh, so, so it is not a direct re relative. Continuing on, of the crocodile of today, but it is a very impressive close cousin. Right, the link between the ancient and the modern crocodile was finally discovered in this is this fort, a small town in central western Queensland, Australia. The discovery. So we're talking about the ancient and the modern, and then we're talking about how uh, the the crocodiles have become extinct as well. So we'll read a little bit more about that. The details following uh, around the idea of extinction. So the discovery of Isis Fordia Duncani in the mid 1990s gave scientists the direct ancestor to modern day crocodiles. This crocodile lived about 98 to 95 MIA, grew to over three feet in length, and weighed in at around 6.5 pounds, relatively small in com uh, comparison to the crocodiles of today, right? And so, gave scientists the direct answer, ancestor to modern day crocodiles, right? And so they're able to find from uh, whatever is found first, or whatever is found later, and be able to refer or uh, to predict, right, uh, how they became extinct and how the ancestral crocodile came to be uh, or uh, have evolved into the modern day crocodile. So they're able to learn about this from history, right? And crocodiles are a formidable reptile, or very scary species of reptile, considered to be at the top of the food chain, right? Consuming all the other uh, species that are under the food chain, right? They're believed to be highly intelligent animals that have been known to hunt and stalk their prey, right? So very formidable and a uh, very intelligent character as well, right? Crocodiles are able to last long periods between feeding, probably contributing to the success of the species, right? So are able to last long periods of between feeding, right? And uh, contributing to the success of the species, right? They're able to, uh, they, have a, they have a high adaptability or a high rate of survival. The continent of Australia is home to two species of the modern crocodile, the freshwater crocodile and the saltwater or estuarine crocodile, Crocodilus porosus, right? Crocodilus jonestoni for freshwater crocodile and Crocodilus porosus for um, saltwater crocodile, right? So both of these would have come from Australia, where Australia would be the uh, the place where the the 
Niger being the first place and then Australia being uh, the place where the uh, recent crocodiles would have originated from, right? And again, two types of species, right? The saltwater crocodile and the freshwater crocodile that we're able to find, right? So the freshwater crocodile is found in nor northern Australia and they live in freshwater rivers, gorges, and billabongs, right? So they are found in these places that we're able to find. The freshwater crocodile is smaller, right? And so we're able to learn about the physical difference between freshwater crocodile and the saltwater crocodile. And uh, so the freshwater crocodile would be smaller than its saltwater counterpart with males growing about to about 10 feet long and females to about 6.5 feet, right? So obviously they'll be smaller, right? Uh, be, uh, being able to right, uh, survive in the fresh water, right? The species of crocodile is not considered dangerous to humans as its diet generally consists of fish, frogs, snakes, turtles, water birds, and other small animals. So as they, are, as they consume smaller animals, they would not be as threatening or dangerous to, the, uh, to human beings, right? It mainly hunts at night, at night and rests at, and recuperates, recovers during the day. The freshwater crocodile has a long, smooth, slender snout or mouth, as opposed to the saltwater crocodile, which has a shorter, wider snout. Even the snout, the physical uh, attribute or the structure of the snout would be different for the, croc uh, for the freshwater crocodile and the saltwater crocodile, right, that we're able to find. And the saltwater crocodile is the largest species of crocodile with males growing up to 23 feet in length and weighing in around 2,200 pounds, right? So definitely bigger than the freshwater crocodiles that we were able to read through, right? Read about, right? And so uh, while the females can grow to a length of about 13 feet, right? So definitely larger than its counterpart, the freshwater counterpart. And the saltwater uh, crocodile can be found along estuaries, rivers, lagoons, swamps, and beaches in Southeast Asia and Northern Australia, right? So here, again, the, uh, the region is being added, right? So places where we can find them and uh, saltwater crocodiles we'll be able to find in Southeast Asia, right? A lot of them we're able to find here uh, in Myanmar as well, right? So the stealthy crocodile waits near the water's edge, right? Pounces out of the water at its unsuspected prey then drags it under the water right uh, that would be how it would be hunting the different crocodiles right here the prey is usually stored underwater for several days to soften before the crocodile returns for its meat right for its meal right so the hunting method that they go through the saltwater crocodile dines on a variety of foods from fish crabs and insects to turtles, birds, other reptiles, dingoes, wallables, cattle, horses, and occasionally people who do not follow safety precautions, right? So definitely larger animals here and even sometimes human beings, right, if they do not uh, follow the precautions, right, safety precautions and often uh, fall into this danger, right? And so they would be uh, more carn uh, car they would be carnivores, right, eating large animals as well. Because of this, saltwater crocodiles were hunted almost to extinction in Australia until they became a protected species in 1970s, since then numbers have increased, right? And so because of this danger, they have been hunted, right, by people, right, uh, and have become extinct uh, before they became a protected species and they tried to uh, save these endangered species from, uh, from uh, extinction, right? And so numbers have increased after that, right? Uh, and uh, the next paragraph would read, one has to marvel at the power of the saltwater crocodile, its body was built to prey, right? The jaws deliver an incredible impact and the 68 teeth are designed to hold prey, penetrate the skin and crush the victim. The tail pro propels the crocodile over 30 feet out of the water at speed faster than a racehorse, and it can administer a huge blow, easily breaking the legs of its victim to prevent an escape, right? So the 68 teeth, the 30 feet, right? All of this, right? Uh, the the, the uh, formidable character of the crocodile is being portrayed here, right? The jaws, the teeth, right? The tail, the power, uh, the strength of the crocodile is being provided, right, in this uh, paragraph as a whole, right, that we're able to find as well, right?
And so for number one, right, crocodiles are carnivores, right, D, eating only meat, right? So obviously, uh, using our common sense would be carnivores, right, they eat meat, right, would be using only meat. Also, there would be the line reference if we were to take a look at the line reference as well, where they talk about uh, the crocodiles being carnivores uh, in the passage as well that we are able to find. Uh, so... Here, right, uh, we'll be able to find that they are carnivore and have a voracious appetite with all the uh, the, the meat that they're eating, right? Uh, they consume as well. So they, uh, so they would be carnivores, right? And so the answer for number one would have been D, right? Carnivores eating only meat, right? Again, uh, for number two, right, choose the best answer. Think about each choice carefully. And so, again, uh, as we have talked about, it, it would be pair, right? So they would be actually corresponding. A would be to A, B to B, C to B, C, D to B, D. So the answer would have to be, right, if we know the pattern. But even if we take a look at uh, what the answer would be, the text clearly lists the food crocodiles generally eat. The entire list is made up of animals, which means, right, uh, which means crocodiles are carnivores, right? This would be the best answer, right? So we were able to feed through the diet, the, the list of uh, animals that the seawater crocodiles and the freshwater crocodiles would be eating, right? And so they would be carnivores or meat-eating animals, right? That we'd be able to find, right? And then uh, for number one, what uh, what species of crocodile is the largest living crop, uh, reptile in the world? And here, again, we'll be able to find the answer in uh, the passage where uh, we'll be able to find that. Uh, is, uh, is this for the Adumkani, right? Gave scientists the direct ancestor to modern-day crocodiles. The crocodiles lived about, right? Uh, they gave us the, uh, the numbers for the physical attributes, right? Three feet in length, weight about six point half pounds, as we are able to find, right? And so, which species of crocodile is the largest living reptile in the world? The answer would have been that we were able to find for uh, for uh, the question would be to uh, to double check would be uh, would have been B crocodilus porosaurus, right? Crocodilus porosaurus. We'll take a look at that. So. Is for Zunkani would be the answer for the next question where it would be talking about the ancestors or how long they have been. But here we're talking about the the, uh, the size that we're able to take a look, right? And so uh, Crocodilus porosaurus would be the uh, the largest rib, uh, living reptile, right? Uh, we talked about freshwater and the saltwater crocodile. The saltwater crocodile is the largest species of the crocodile, right? We are able to find the answer from paragraph five for uh, the question, right? So the answer would have been B for number one, right? And then uh, for number two, choose the best answer, think about each, right? And so uh, again, the pattern would be A, would be corresponding to A, B to B, C to C, D to D. So the answer would be B. Crocodilus porosaurus is the proper name for the saltwater crocodile, which is the largest species of crocodile in the world today. It is also a reptile, so this would make it the largest re living reptile in the world, right? This would be the best answer, right? Uh, it would make it the largest living reptile, right, in the world, right? Uh, as we have found, right, the sea water crocodile or crocodilus prosaurus would be the largest living crocodile, and therefore uh, it would be uh, the uh, it would be the answer for uh, one, right, as well as two, right, for B uh, for one, B for two, right, that we'll be able to find. Okay, so for number one, as we find, right, list the reptiles that belong in the crocodilian family. So we'll be able to find that the reptiles that belong to the crocodilian family would be, again, uh, the hint would be provided in the first paragraph that we're able to find, right? And they would be, as we find, right, uh, would be uh, in the first paragraph that we're able to find, right, uh, the three types of uh, crocodiles that we were able to find, the crocodilian would include crocodile, alligator, and caimans, right? So three types of species that we're able to find for this, for the crocodilian species that we're able to find, right? So the answer would be uh, 
payments, crocodiles, and alligators as we're able to find, right? And what features make the saltwater crocodile so formidable? So what would make a crocodile so dangerous and so uh, scary in some sense, right? And there would be three things that we'll be able to find from paragraph six, and they would be the jaws, the tail, and the teeth that we'll be able to find. So let's take a look at paragraph six and find those answers here as well, right? The jaws deliver an incredible impact. The teeth are designed to hold prey, penetration, and crush the victim, right? And so, and uh, we'll be able to find, and the tail propels the crocodile over 30 feet, right? Uh, faster than a racehorse, right? So jaws, teeth, and tail that we'll be able to find right here in this passage as a whole. Right? And then uh, complete the sentences using words from the text, right? A freshwater crocodile consists of, again, read the paragraph four and five to five, they find the information they're able to find, right? And the saltwater crocodiles consist of, so what do the freshwater crocodile and the saltwater crocodile, what do they eat, right? They were able to find. So the freshwater crocodile would be, right, its diet generally consists of fish, frogs, snakes, turtles, water birds, and other small animals. Right? And so the answer for uh, for freshwater crocodiles would be the list that we'll be able to find in paragraph four, right? And then for paragraph five, we'll be able to find, right? The answers would be, right? Uh, we'll be able to read here that it uh, uh, dines on, the seawater crocodile would find on variety of food from fish, crabs, insects to turtles, birds, other reptiles, dingoes, wallabies, cattle, horses, and occasionally even people who do not follow safety precaution right? and so these would have been the diet for both freshwater crocodile and the seawater crocodile as we have found in paragraph four and paragraph five right and then uh, for number four as we find right for number four that we find would be what species of crocodile, right? What species of crocodile? What species of crocodile is the direct ancestor of modern day crocodiles, right? And so uh, the previous question that we read through, right? From paragraph two, we were able to find what would have been the ancestor Right, of the modern day crocodile, we read through this, right? And we uh, found the answer for that. So the previous uh, answer that we found, right? Is this for the Duncani in the late mid 1990s, right? Gave scientists that the direct ancestor to the modern day crocodiles, right? So it would be, is this for the Duncani, right? That we have found in paragraph two, right? And so the answer for number four, what happened, right? Now uh, this is for the Duncani, right? ancestor of being the ancestor of modern day crocodile and again uh, what is the what is considered to be the main cause of the extinction of super croc as we find and so consider the huge uh, size of the species right and so we were able to find that right that would have been the line reference right where we found that the large size right would have given it a voracious appetite right eating all that it can find and therefore would have run out of things to eat and therefore died as a result of this right had a voracious appetite and probably died out as a result of this right and the answer would have been right that they had died out probably due to the uh, the, the lack of food right due to their uh, voracious appetite and their large size. Right? Okay, so explain the importance of the discovery and its support that we're able to find. So, right. So uh, we read through right the uh, the modern day uh, alligators and the crocodiles coming from the uh, ancestors right that we were able to find. Uh, that so the uh, the scientists were able to find the answer that the direct ancestors uh, to the modern day ancestors were uh, discovered in is this fort right we were able to take a look at that in uh, paragraph two where we found that right uh, get the discovery of is this fort Duncani gave scientists the direct ancestor to modern day crocodiles right that we would have been able to find. And then uh, for number two would be uh, matching the uh, the pictures of the two crocodiles that we have, Crocodilus Johnstoni, the uh, uh, the uh, the freshwater crocodiles that we're able to find, right? And then uh, 
the crocodilus porosus, which would be the seawater crocodiles that we're able to find, right? And we have learned about that they have two uh, different, right, uh, the physical attributes where the freshwater crocodiles, don't stony, right, would have long, smooth, slender snout as opposed to the saltwater crocodile, which has a shorter, wider snout, right? And uh, they, the seawater crocodile would also have uh, large jaws, right, in order to, uh, have to, uh, have to capture the victim and the prey as well, right? So we will be able to match, right, uh, the uh, cross johnstoni, the freshwater crocodile, right, cross Crocodilus johnstoni would have the uh, the flexible, right, uh, the uh, uh, long, smooth, slender snout as we looked at, and then the shorter snout, but the powerful jaw would be Crocodilus porosus, right? That would be able to find, and then a uh, prehistoric uh, uh, Sicorus, right, uh, imperator was discovered in, as we found, uh, they would have been found in uh, the first. Uh, Imperator, the first species would have found would have been found in Niger, right, a country in Africa that we're able to find, right. In paragraph two, they give us the reference where, right, they would have been found, right. Uh, the uh, Sakura's Imperator, right, Supercock would have been found in Niger in Africa, right, in uh, 110 MYA, right. And so the answer for number three would have been Imperator would have been found in E F. Right, and then uh, in your own words, explain how a saltwater crocodile catches and kills its prey. Right, so we'll be able to take a look at how they catch their prey uh, in paragraph uh, in paragraph uh, paragraph six, right, where we are able to find that they actually would. Uh, uh, be able to penetrate the skin, crush the victim, right. Uh, and then, uh, right, uh, be able to capture in that way. Uh, even better here, we'll be able to find, right, that what they do would be, they would be hiding, right, they would be hiding near the water's edge, right, and then pouncing or jumping up at the water as it's unsuspecting prey when they're not expecting the predator and drags it under the water, right? And therefore, right, would be using the stealthy, right, or uh, secretive hiding method, right, in order to capture the prey. So you'll be able to use your own words in describing, right, how they would be hiding and capturing the prey from uh, from behind, right, in a surreptitious or secretive manner, right, uh, with their power and strength, right, that we'll be able to find. And then uh, for uh, number five would have been all the uh, the the, uh, the exact uh, numbers or data that you would have to have to find, right? A male uh, seawater crocodile weighs around, uh, the answer would be 2,200 uh, pounds and has uh, 68 teeth that we'll be able to find. So again, uh, going back to the passage, right, where you'll be able to find the numbers, right? Uh, the 2,268 that we're able to find, the answers would have come from right, uh, the uh, references that we'll be able to find uh, in the passage as a whole, right, um, would be 2,268, right, would be weighing in 2,200 pounds and 68 teeth that we're able to find, right, for the male, uh, male uh, saltwater crocodile or uh, 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 crocodilus porosus, right? That we'll be able to find. And uh, Sarocus imperator weighed pounds and had how many teeth? So we'll be able to find. So go, let's go back to, right? Uh, we'll have to find the line reference and the answer for that as well. And so that would have been imperator would be uh, 17,500 pounds and 132 feet, right? That we, we'll be able to find as well, right? And in Australia, uh, in Australia, let's go back to the line again. In Australia, saltwater, saltwater crocodiles became a protected species in, so what would have been the year for that, right? The saltwater crocodile for the year that it was protected would be, 
that we were able to find, right? As they were becoming extinct due to the fact that people were hunting them due to the potential danger that they were posing to the human community and society, right? So uh, in order to protect ex uh, their extinction, they had uh, become, uh, become protected uh, as uh, endangered species and that would have been in the year of 1970, right? That we would have been able to find. And um, the last two questions, male freshwater crocodiles grow to blank feet and females to blank feet. So if we look at the freshwater crocodiles, the Jonestoni crocodilus, Jonestoni crocodiles that we're able to find, the answer would have been here, uh, the freshwater crocodiles, the males would be growing to, the males would be growing to 10 feet long, whereas the females to 6.5 feet, right? So we'll be able to find that they would be growing to, the males would be growing to 10 feet and females to 6.5 feet. And then uh, at the present time, length species of crocodilians exist as we are able to find. So how many species of crocodilians are we able to find? We'll look at the, take a look at the passage here as well. So how many species are we able to find? There would be 23 species of crocodilians around today, right? That we'll be able to find, right? And so the answer for the last question, right? That we would be covering for today would be 23 for the last question, right? That we would have been able to find. Okay, so this will be wrapping up uh, our uh, first part of our reading comprehension and we'll be continuing on with the uh, with the next passages to come in the next video in the uh, following uh, preceding classes as well.